This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Great seasonings such as the Four Horsemen, the Savory, the Coffee and Q, and our beloved Carrion Steak. You can't go wrong with any of those great seasonings and much more over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Again, that is the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. While you're there, be sure to use that promo code SLUCAST10 at checkout for 10% your entire order. Again, that is SLUCAST10. While you're at it, if you are in mainly the north northwest part of Ohio, be sure to check out the Mad Canadian social media sites to see where he and his food trucks are heading to next. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium small batch micro roaster. They roast your beans to order. They're veteran owned. They're Ohio based. If I didn't say that already, they're in the Toledo area. Um, once again, doing everything right. It's a company based on integrity. They are, are their beans are fair trade certified. They don't roast your beans until you order them. So you get the freshest beans possible. Uh, they're USDA certified organic. They do the right thing even when no one's making them do it because that's what integrity is. There's a company that does everything right. Unlike some Cleveland based breweries who we will not speak of who are doing things very, very wrong. Uh, some of their flavors are available in K-Cup. You get free shipping over $50. Gift cards are available. And like I said, you can, oh, by the way, you can also save money on uh, subscribe and save services if you do find that one coffee that uh, just, just hits the right spot for you. So you can find all of that at ironbeancoffee.com. Once again, that is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. I was mentally prepared to do uh, Mad Canadian, Kyle. <laughs> I like to mix it up. Mix it up there just, for you. You just, you just you throw, throw, you threw that audible at me without saying anything. How's it going, YouTube? How's it going, our Discord on this lovely Sunday evening? Yes, well, it'd be a, be a lot more lovely had Ohio State not look like complete garbage. But we're going to mm. get into that. Once we'll again, I have, I have the sound. I have the sound mixer or the sound uh, noise. What, what's the word I'm looking for? Background noise reducer on. I don't think this is going to work, but I'm going to try it anyway. I heard the original. Tss. I just love it. <clears throat> just the original. Tss. This is a, this is a Jackie O's. This is a Who Cooks for You. Nice. I think this is uh, maybe my favorite pale ale of all the pale ales. Which nice. is saying something because I do like a pale ale. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get into it, Jared. <clears throat> We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Oh, I am all right over here. Are you sure? Are you sure you're all right? Not really. It's a right. bucket basketball on a three game losing streak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, not well. Not, not well. Not, not but, doing all right. Not doing all right. But let's 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 start things off positive, shall we? How about, sure. how about we talk about some Ohio State football recruiting news? Yes, let's let's do that. We're going to get positive, then we're going to get negative, then we're going to tweak it back towards positive just a little bit. But mm -hmm. first, the positive. Ohio State gets, Kyle, get this, a top flight wide receiver recruit. Hold the press. No. 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 Brian Hartline doing work again? Brian Hartline doing work again. Kyle on Gray's. His name's Grace. Uh, four star, four star wide receiver out of Arizona. He is currently per the composite, the 17th best wide receiver and the second best athlete in that state of Arizona. Kyle, uh, dad is a former uh, Arizona state football player. Mom, mm -hmm. former Arizona state track star. Comes to Ohio State. I, that's 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 got to be a good sign, right? It's got to mm -hmm. be a good sign. Gotta, 
It kind of makes you think about makes you, makes you think he really wanted to come to Ohio State because it seems like the cards were stacked, much, yeah. much like with Zeke in Missouri. Exactly what I was thinking was Zeke. Both of his parents were athletes at Missouri. At Missouri, and hey, got to get them once in a while here. But yeah, a really great, just another addition to an already just, just overpacked <laughs> yeah. group here. Well, you know, you say overpacked, but this is a 2022 kid, which is, you know, we're, we're past national signing day. The 2022 kids are now the, the current recruiting class. Yeah. But if you think about it, he'll be walking into a training camp where the two starters will both be gone. Mm -hmm. You'll have three amazing players ready to take over in uh, Fleming. Uh, you, you guys know, you guys know you have those, but they'll all be in their last year of, I don't not, not last year of eligibility, but theoretically speaking, you know what I'm trying to say? Theoretically mm -hmm. speaking, any one or more of those guys could leave for the NFL after that year. So he could be looking at a sophomore season in which the wide receiver room just got emptied out huge over the past two seasons. Yeah, very true. Very so, true. You know, we say overpacked, but Ohio State's not keeping all these guys for f five years. We won't keep mm -hmm. most of them for four. Won't keep any of them for five. Won't keep most of them for four. And uh, a few of them are going to leave after three. Yeah, well, it still won't. We won't. We still won't turn down a no. <clears throat> Turned out a, a great athlete in Mr. Grace here. And, and and as always, guys transfer, guys bust, guys, you never know. So you acquire talent. No, never worry about having too much talent. Never, ever worry about that. It, it will work itself out. It always does. Yep. So what what have you understand with... Um, with Kai on here, what makes him so special and why should Buckeye nation be excited for him? Uh, just outside the 24 seven proper rankings, their, their proper rankings, just outside the top 100, a little bit lower in the composite at 127. top 20 wide receiver in the country. Uh, second best player. I think you, as you stated in the entire state of Arizona, which is a state that is producing more and more high school talent. Uh, smaller guy, shiftier guy, um, you know, maybe a guy who you look at more in a, a slot type role. But I feel like those I feel like that's not as much of a thing as it used to be, where it's just like the big guys are on the outside and the small shifty guys are. On, I feel like that's I feel like that's going by the wayside. So he's a good wide receiver. And that's that's all it sort of breaks down as he's a good mm -hmm. wide receiver. And if Ohio State is willing to take a wide receiver this early in the recruiting cycle, because we're once again, Kyle, early in the recruiting cycle, I would imagine that they like him a lot. Mm -hmm. That this, with the amount of talent that they are pursuing at the wide receiver position, with the amount of talent that they already have at the wide receiver position, they can just pick and choose exactly who they want. So if they're yep. picking grays, I'm sure I, you know, at this point, I think you have to learn to trust the coaching staff. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Uh, so going back to the 2021 recruiting class here, mm -hmm. JTT. Yeah. Not really much news. No, since it, last time we talked about I'm JTT. Surprised you're bringing him up right now. <laughs> uh, but I mean, there's still talks that he's still waiting. Yeah. He's still waiting to commit. He's really wanting to visit campus, really want to see what it's like before making his decision, decision which I, I can't blame sure. him. I can't sure. blame him. You're the best player in the country. You're the best player in your recruiting in your recruiting class. You kind of get to call your own shots. Mm, exactly. Yeah. So it still may be a while and still until we hear anything from JTT, but we do see that he is coming to Columbus. That's going to be a really good sign for Buckeye Nation. He's in the class. Don't worry about it. 
Okay. One of the other reasons why he's able to play this game is mm-hmm. because the, the the people in the Woody Hayes feel very good that he is, in fact, coming to Columbus. And just because yes. he hasn't announced it to the public yet doesn't mean it's not. He's, he's coming to Ohio State. Don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What else we got in the, the recruiting this year, Derek? Bad news. Uh, we had talked a little bit about Will Johnson. Uh, he is incredible corner um either in or just outside the top five depending upon who you ask uh he is from gross point michigan he is an incredibly talented corner uh the composite has him just outside the top 10 players overall uh, the 24 7 sports proper has him a little bit further back but it's um he's he's committed to michigan and it seemed like for a real long time that it was a foregone conclusion he was going to Ann Arbor. That was a foregone conclusion. Then there appeared to have been some weakness, some 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 hesitation as you know he saw a lot of the defensive coaching staff move on. Um, they got fired. They 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 went elsewhere, and mm-hmm. so that of course causes hesitation the people who you have a relationship with are now gone. So that, that potentially opened the door for other programs. Ohio state may be chief among them to come into the picture. And it looked like this foregone conclusion of him going to Ann Arbor was, was why it was not, not, not so far, not, not, not quite so foregone, Uh, but he does end up committing to Michigan. I'll say this. I still feel more confident about him ending up in Ohio State's class right now. I feel better Mm -hmm. about that happening right now than I did two or three months ago. Even with him committed to Michigan, I feel less sure about his future in Michigan now, even with, like I said, even with a commitment on the books than I did three months ago where it just felt like, yeah, of course he's going to Michigan. Shut up. (laughs) Now it's like I'm still going to keep an eye on Will Johnson. I'm 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 not closing the door on this recruitment quite yet. Yep, exactly, exactly. All right, Kyle, it's time to talk some basketball. Uh, Ooh, it's boy. um, it's not been great. This hasn't nope. this this hasn't been great. Uh, mm. The last time we talked, we were fresh off a loss against Michigan, and uh, since then. They they lost a real stinker to Michigan State. They didn't have Kyle Young, but I'm not going to give them. I'm not going to give them that pass. And then they we're fresh off of their loss to Iowa. Um, the defense is still looking like the defense looks. It's not a great defense. That's it's just uh, there's too many big players down in the paint in the big 10 that Ohio state just doesn't have a guy to match up with And that's just going to hurt Ohio state. And that's just a reality of where Ohio state is this season. And yep. we've talked about exactly. it before, but we have to mention it again. It, it, it has to be said. So the mm-hmm. defense is just never going to be great, mm-hmm. but their offense has sort of fallen apart. Yep, lately. It has. They they scored they scored sixty seven points against um, Michigan State on Thursday. They lose they lose to Michigan State seventy one to sixty seven. And the big key stat here, Jared, four for fourteen behind the arc. Yeah, and you know they they had a good game shooting the three against Michigan, but that was a very closely contested game against a really good opponent. Mm-hmm. Michigan State is, you know, it's still Michigan State, but this isn't the Michigan State that we're used to seeing. So this this is a team that Ohio State should have beaten. They fail to shoot three pointers and they they lose to, let's just say it, an inferior opponent. Mm-hmm. Again, against Iowa, terrible game shooting threes. And they, they just got they they just got run out of their own building. There yeah. there was a moment there. With, you know, that, that the, the third quarter of the game, I know it's college basketball and so on and so forth, but what essentially amounts is the third, 
quarter of the game. They they brought it back. They made it interesting, but and 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 why was it interesting during that stretch? Because they were shooting the three and actually making it. Without that, without the threat of a three, Ohio <laughs> State's just not capable of producing because they're not big enough down low. They they need to have they need to pull the other team out away from the paint with the threat of their three point shot, and without that. Without that, they're they're just an inferior team compared to what they they can be. Mm, yep, yep. It's it's tough. Like just looking at just since Iowa is still fresh in our in our minds here. There was times that Ohio State like looked really good defensively. Just credit to Iowa, they just made the shots when they needed to. But then there was times, especially especially in the first half and a couple of times in that second half, how got cold and for long periods of time. And you can't, you can't do that moving forward right now. How they cannot afford to have that anymore. No, they, they have the, they have some time off. They don't play for a while. Uh, they don't play for, yeah, they don't play for almost uh, six days. They don't. They, they they don't play for six days. They they face Illinois on Saturday, and it's it's time to save the regular season. This, this was this was a team that we were talking about two episodes ago as a number one seed potentially, as a yep. as a team that could, if the matchups played out right, could make mm-hmm. it to the final four. This is a team that we said was an elite eight team and it's hard to be that confident with any of those statements right now yep exactly i mean the past three games there yeah right now it's kind of funny that there was a lot of experts saying ohio state is like on that cusp of a one two that that, like a one seed in the tournament but yet as of right now ohio state is fifth in the big 10, which tells you how deep the big 10 is this year. So as it, as it stands right now, Ohio state would play the winner of Northwestern and Penn state. And then if Ohio state wins, they would play Purdue. So Ohio state does not get that second buy. Right. As if they were in one of the top four seeds there. So this winning Illinois Huge. This, this is going to be big. This is going to be big there if they want that second bye week. Now, I don't really think it's going to really matter much about how say going from fifth to fourth or something like that. You, you still end up probably playing Purdue in in the end, but you get that extra day of rest, which I think the team needs. They're they're a little banged up. Kyle Young, even though he played against Iowa, I, it was not him. Uh, he did not have. Uh, what what was his minutes before I actually say that? Uh, uh, gotta look it up here. Uh, it's not it's not in our stat line. Um, no, he he was one for four, and he was one for one <laughs> beyond the arc. There, he hit Ohio State's first successful three pointer in this game, the, only in the first half. The, he hit the that that tells you all you need to know about Ohio State this game. And like we can talk about Garza, and Garza's great, but we knew Garza was going to have a good game. Like, Mm -hmm. once again, Ohio State doesn't have anyone down low to deal with Garza or the other Garzas that are in this conference. We saw it against Michigan. We saw it. We saw it again here. But this I I think Iowa had the game offensively that you expect them to have. Of course, Garza is great. Ohio State doesn't have an answer for Garza. You just have to outscore Iowa like they did when they went to Iowa. That game saw both teams in the 80 point area. Iowa held up their side of the bargain by scoring 73 points. It probably would have got into 80 had the game actually been competitive down the stretch because Iowa was scoring that well. If the game were competitive, Iowa probably would have scored 80 something. Ohio State only scores 57. Ohio State did not hold up their end of the bargain. Kyle Kyle Young ended up playing for 25 minutes. 
which it's, I would say is low for him. He's typically in the 30s. It's not terribly mm-hmm. low. Don't get me wrong. It's not. There you go. There's the updated for it for you. you. Can look there, Jared. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. So, yep. Young, 25 minutes. Washington, 29, which that seems low for Washington, but little was in there for most of the game, 32 minutes, by far the most of anybody. Yeah. And, Liddell, of course. Yeah. I mean, this is Liddell's team. Mm hmm. I mean, yeah, he went he went seven for eleven in the game, led the team with fifteen points, uh, had three rebounds for the game there. But I think the other I think thing he and that CJ really, Walker were really the only, I would say, reliable offensive weapons the game this game. Uh, yeah. problem with CJ Walker is he got in the foul trouble early on in the game and and that hurt his minutes. Yep. And that's why you saw a lot, that's why you saw a lot of minutes from 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 uh Jallo, which I was surprised we saw a lot of Jallo in this game. We did. In, in Towns and Key. So we got to see a lot of different players coming in, getting some meaningful minutes just because of that. Yeah, three players off of the bench having 10 plus minutes. Uh, Seth Towns just under that with nine. Uh, once again, Ohio State's using their bench. But yeah, it's it's was not, it wasn't just... <laughs> I don't think either team played particularly well. I think both of these teams are lesser teams now than when they played in in uh, uh I, I can never remember is it Ames or Iowa City? Which one is which again? It's Ames, right? Yes, it's Ames. I got there. It's fine. Uh when they played in Ames a little while back. Both of those teams were at the height of their power when they played in Ames, Iowa a few weeks back. Mm -hmm. Neither of these teams are at their peak right now, which I think then leads us to the question, Kyle, is is Ohio State peaked? I mean, looking at these last three, looking at these last three games, they they played well against, they looked good good against Michigan. They 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 did look good against Michigan. Michigan. They looked really good against Michigan. They just didn't win. And, when you play a top five team, sometimes you don't win. Uh, mm-hmm. That's fine. The, I mean, it's Michigan, so it's not. But you, you know what I'm saying. Uh, but no, these last two games, it's been bad. I'm it's real. been bad offensively. Yeah, I mean, 57 points and then 67 when Ohio State was it something like they were 13 and one when they scored more than 71 points. It's, it's something like that. And the one loss was a week ago. Yeah, it's uh, live by the three, die by the three. And I feel like Ohio State's dying by the three right now. Yep, 28% and 29%. Yeah, it's... You got to be shooting in the 40s. Mm -hmm. It's just that simple. You got to be shooting in the 40s. And they're not. That's that's where they have to be. Because once again, I'm going to beat this dead horse, Kyle. They don't have size in the paint. They can't get down in there and bang with the Garzas of the world. Mm-hmm. They just don't have that person. He might develop into that guy. He's young. I like said key. I think he has a good future at Ohio state. He's not that yet. That sucks. We wish he was that right now, but he's not. And he he hopefully will get there. He has the potential to get there. I think he very well can get there. Right now, he's not. He saw a lot of time in this game. He saw 12 so, minutes. So, so two things. My, my last comments here regarding to the basketball team, though. Two things the State Until we get has to the to questions. Improve. Yeah. Two things the House State has to, has to improve on here. One, improve on three-point shooting there. Defensively, I think the – I think – Overall, I think Ohio State is fine defensively. I mean, they they have their moments here and there. But I think overall, I think Ohio State's defense is fine. But the other thing here Ohio State has to improve on is turnovers. Turnovers. You look yeah. at the Iowa game here. Iowa got to shoot the ball 62 times. Ohio State, 51. You only had 51 attempts to, to shoot the ball. Like you had 11 less attempts than Iowa there. That's... That's pretty significant, honestly. Yeah. And a lot of that is because of the turnovers. Uh, 13 
13 turnovers, Nomad. And Iowa had five. Yeah, and they only had two offensive rebounds this game against Iowa. That's well, it's kind of hard when you got a guy like Garza who's been there for 38 minutes. Yeah, I but at the same time, I yeah, I mean, no, I mean, you're right, but I feel like they still have had success more success than you would anticipate given the size that they're giving up getting rebounds in the past few games. I thought they had a really great rebounding game against Michigan. And th- once again, there's, you know, not 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 to minimize, but they but they have a, they have a a Garza type as well. So, yeah, it's only two offensive rebounds in a game in which you're not shooting the point the three-pointer well. And a three-pointer's a you, you kind of want to get those rebounds more often than you would a lot of other rebounds they're they're just you got you got to make you got to make the threes is what it boils down to um arns needs to get out of his slump uh he uh, once again only had one three this game um is that correct kyle did he finish with one uh yes he did yeah the the past few games for him has been really bad here i look at the past Let's see if I go to game logs here. The past ooh, three games here, he not, just not, had three, yeah, yeah, he, he just he had put up a goose had, egg against against Michigan State. Yeah, he had three points against um, Iowa, then zero points against um, Michigan, and if I Michigan scroll, State zero points against Michigan State as well. Yeah, so he's. And the averaging last time he one had point a game figure, over the last time double games. figures was against Maryland back in the pretty much the first of February. Yeah. He, he's, he's in a pretty big slump here. Yes. <laughs> uh, that's uh, there's no other way of, of saying it. That's a guy who you're expecting to get three pointers from and you aren't getting them. Mm. Period. Yep. 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 All right. Um you let's let's do a quick uh no. It's it's too early for that. It's too early for the ad reads. Let's get a couple basketball questions um and then we'll we'll hit up an ad read somewhere in between them. All right, sounds good. All right, let's let's start from the top here. Uh Nomad. Nomad asks, is Sparty the easiest Big 10 team to hate when you're playing them and the easiest to forget when you aren't? I mean that that applies to this season. I don't know if I want to make that like an overarching grand statement, but yeah, they're kind of a forgettable team this year, but you still, but when you're actually on the court with them, they're still Sparty basketball or football. He's, he clarifies. Um, now I've never really hated their football program. Nomads in the chat. And I never, I never really hate for say Sparty's uh, basketball team team either. Get a little southern on that team. Yeah, that team. <laughs> um, for me, the easiest Big Ten team to hate when we're playing them, honestly, for me in basketball, it's probably Wisconsin. Yeah, there's uh there's a lot to that. I feel like IU is is just always there though. They're, they're just right there and there's the Bobby Knight stuff. And if you're old enough to remember that, I know you are nomad. You're an old man. But <laughs> <laughs> if you guys take shots at me, I'm going to take shots back. It's just that simple. Um, yeah, the. Um, yeah, it's, I, I was, I think, always in the forefront of our mind. I almost feel like they're more of a Michigan to us in basketball than Michigan is. Um, that was true at one point. I don't know if it's it, it rains true in 2021, but there was certainly a point in time in which that was true. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, but to answer your question in basketball, yes. In football, not really. Um, to, to answer your question. Uh, this one's from Gangland. Uh, can we start the petition to get Gus Johnson back on March Madness games? I don't know. Is Fox going to loan him out to 
because Fox Fox doesn't do that. Uh, I don't know. I've always wanted, and like I know we all have uh, mixed feelings. Re Kirk Curb Street. All I ever want. I don't care if they're both well past their prime and geezerly. I don't care. All I have ever wanted is Gus Johnson doing the play by play and Herb Street doing the the color commentary. That is all I've ever wanted. And as much as I, I that's not what you ask me. <laughs> That is the answer I'm getting. But yeah, I'll take Gus Johnson on my television whenever I can get Gus Johnson on my television. Yeah, so yeah start you, the petition. You, you, the petition's not going to get you anywhere, but start it. Yeah, we can start one. Yeah, I remember listening to some like old, especially in like the mid 2000s runs with Ohio State, just listening to some of the Gus Johnson um, play play by play there. Yeah, I, I think he's great on he's basketball. He's always, always entertaining. I think he's great on basketball. Fantastic yes. on basketball. He's, he's great anywhere, honestly. Uh, Jimmy Jackson? Uh, I can't remember where, where Jimmy's at. I think he's still on CBS. Is he? I think so. You know, I'm going to look it up, Kyle, look real it up. quick here. <laughs> I don't think my claps come through anymore, Kyle. This is a sad day. I just realized. Oh, dang. We, you you um, lose things. When you upgrade with your noise-canceling technology, uh, sometimes you lose the, the little things. All right. Uh, <laughs> you, while you're looking that up, uh, Nomad asks, and this is uh, in the, the wake of the Michigan State game, he asks this question, is it possible to beat a team and bad officials in the same game? Yes, it is possible. Uh, you need to make your three-point shots in order to do that, however. Uh, you, you, the answer to that question, if you're making your three pointers, but otherwise, no, uh, they, they should have never been that close with this Michigan state team for the refs to matter. You know, it's sort of like if you compare and contrast the two Clemson games, the, the two playoff games against Clemson, the, these past two years, Ohio state was so far up on Clemson and beating Clemson so badly that a bad ref call here or there wouldn't have mattered. A bad ref call the year before or two hurt Ohio State tremendously. So yeah, you can beat bad officiating. You just, you, it's just, it's, it's a thing that works against you or for you for that matter. But it's, uh, yeah, it's possible. Of course it's possible. I can't remember who owns this um, station, but he is currently Jimmy Jackson. Jim Jackson is currently on the Big East Network. Oh, really? He's also, I think I think it might be Fox then, because it also has on here. He's also a Fox Sports One Network NBA analyst. So there you go. He's with Fox. He's with Fox Sports One and apparently the Big East Network, which I think it's a decent guess that's uh, a Fox property, a Fox Sports property, that is. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, let's see. Question here from Nomad. I think this is regarding to the hey, Michigan hey, Kyle, State game. You yep. know what? We we can do that. Um, but I think we need to do an ad read first. All right. Sure. All right, let's hear from our good friend, the Mad Canadian. Uh, Mad Canadian's been a great sponsor for us for the past year plus. Longer than a year. Yeah, year uh, plus. Yeah. Uh, be sure to check out some of those great packages that the Mad Canadian has. The Just Send It, which is a great just introductory to his seasonings, has the S&P Bud at Snore and Heat, the Cajun and that and the smoked which is just you get you get all the great flavors it's just a great variety pack or one of my favorites the sweet heat or i like to call it the wing set it's the four horsemen his hottest seasoning the discord which is the second hottest yeah, i'd say <laughs> they're i'd say they're tied okay and then you have the two border and the old fashioned or you're, if you're not sure which one to get, or if you're just not sure of picking ham picking all of the seasons he has, just get that whole hog. Get get that whole hog package, which is one of each of the seasonings over at the Mad Canadian BB. 
BBQ.com. Again, that is the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. You can also save 10% more when you use that promo code Sloopcast10. Again, Sloopcast10 at checkout for 10% off that entire order. Be sure to also check up, check out the if I can talk, <laughs> check out that Mad Canadian's uh, social media to check out where he and his food truck are heading to next. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Kyle recently re-upped on some uh, on some Iron Bean Coffee. And the one I'm drinking right this second is the drink from the skull of your enemy. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the website describes it as a traditional Indonesian coffee that is edgier and smokier. It's thick, creamy, chocolatey with notes of strong cedar, sweet tobacco, wine, and spice. And I must say, that is accurate. It's real good. It's real, real good. Now, I've, I've not, I say, there, there's, been, there's been one. And I'm not going to name it. Cause I don't want to, I don't want to, there's been one where I was like, ah, this one's okay. I'm not going to name it. And it wasn't bad. Don't get me wrong by any means. It was still very good. It's just by the, uh, high standard that I now, but I, I fully say that it was just my taste and it wasn't that the coffee was bad. It was just not my preference, but that I've tried, I close to all of them at this point. And there's been like one, all the other ones at this point are somewhat tied for my favorite. Which one is that that I'm drinking now? Oh, uh, that is the drink from the skull of your enemy. That one's great. That's the one I'm drinking right now, and it's amazing. Uh, He says like sweet tobacco, wine, spice, uh, notes of cedar. Like that's a dead on description. And it's it's so good. It is it is just amazing. I I love every part of it. It's the, the, the beans are incredibly dark and shiny. Uh, it grinds really well, which I know is maybe, uh, he says, uh, Nomad says he has a bag of the fierce coming and he can't wait. I've had the fierce. It's good. It's one of my favorites. Uh, they're all great except for that one, but I'm going to keep that to myself. Uh, the, (laughs) again, it wasn't bad. It's just my preference. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're all tremendous. You can find the one that's right for you buying a sampler. Uh, they have a new, I forget what that's called, but you can basically get one of each of the flavors. You can go find it on the website is essentially like a big old sampler thing. And uh, I think Kyle, where is this a look it up, Kyle, look it up situation. I think it is. He's going to look up the name of that for me, but you can try all of the coffees for yourself. Uh, you can find that package at ironbeancoffee.com. Kyle, what's it called? No, oh, he wasn't there yet. I, I, I gave him too much credit that he was going to get there in a timely fashion. He's not quite there yet. You know what, Kyle? We'll, we'll let you know on the third ad read what that's called. You can go to ironbeancoffee.com on your own time and figure it out for yourself. Oh, Kyle's got it. I, I know that face. Kyle's got shebang it. sampler. The whole shebang. It's called the whole shebang. Uh, you can try all of them. In fact, the next time I make an order, that that's probably going to be it. Because there have there are a few of them that have escaped me so far. So I'm probably going to get a whole shebang next time I re-up. Um, and, and, and also, like, if you're not a frequent coffee drinker, that's a great way to keep your coffee, like, individually wrapped and fresh. And you can try them all yourself. So I think that's just a win freaking win right there, in my opinion. So you can find all of that and more at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. All right, let's get into some more of our uh, Ask Sloopcast questions. Yeah, we got some more bad us off ones. again here, we have Nomad. Is it possible to be a team and have bad officials? Oh, well, well, we already did that one. That's one we That's just did. Mean. Yes. Uh, now, it is. This one, it's difficult. This one from Buckeye Zach, also in the wake of the Michigan State game. A lot of people very upset about the officiating, especially at the end, and you're right to be. Again, we don't like to argue about referees on this show. That's not a thing we do. Um, we, don't, we don't like commenting on it. But, but sometimes it I, needs said. But Jared. <laughs> when in the sa- for the sake of the Michigan there, State there a, game, sometimes it needs said. There is a reason why Holtman got two technicals in that game. Uh, yeah. and how, how often, how often do you see Holtman getting technicals? Not often. No. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. It's, we don't talk about refs hardly ever on this show. It's by policy. We don't talk about officiating. It's cheap 
bottom barrel analysis. So you know, when we do break that rule and talk about the officiating, that it's earned because we never do it. So you know it's bad when the Sloopcast is talking about the officiating. And the same way that it's, you know it's bad when Holtman's picking up technicals because he's not that guy. We mentioned Bobby Knight earlier in the show. He's not Bobby <laughs> Knight. He's not that guy. He's not the, I'm going to go get a technical just to prove something. He's not that guy. And the same way we don't ever talk about officiating, he, Holtman's not that guy. So you know when it happens, it actually does mean something. And in the for the sake of the Michigan State game, it meant something. I don't know if I answered your question. Uh, yeah, no, no, no one's paying anyone off. Some people are just bad at their jobs. Refs aren't, well, I don't mm -hmm. want to say never because basketball, and we have at least seen one instance of that in the NBA where, but it was a, but it was gamblers. It wasn't the league, which is a huge difference, but no, I refuse to believe ever that a game is being fixed by the institutions at play. Oh, this next one here, Jared. Uh, again, this is after the 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 Sparty loss. He says after two. And this back is Buckeye back, Zach again. Yep, after two back to back losses in very close, closely contested games, where where we saw how size has harmed us mm -hmm. in the rebound game. We simply gave up way too many offensive rebounds. What do you think the Buckeyes can do to minimize the offensive boards for opponents? Or rebound in general. You you don't you lack the size in the in the paint. I don't I think they rebound really well considering considering the size that they don't have, and considering again, we look at the rebounds against Iowa. They they gave up four more offense. They so they were behind the offensive rebounds by two, but they only gave up six. It's not a ton of offensive rebounds to give up. And as far as the defensive rebounds, they won that battle. Considering the size, they won the battle by one. Let's be fair. They won it by, by one rebound. But considering the size that they give up, considering that you are going against a guy like Garza, who's great. He's an amazing basketball player. You have no one to match up against him. You lost the rebound battle by three rebounds. The numbers were similar against Michigan. Again, giving up huge size in the middle, and they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Michigan rebounding. Do we want to win the rebound battles? Yeah, of course. Of course. That goes without saying. The the rebounds against Michigan State were worse. Uh, they they lost that battle by quite a lot. They lost that one by seven, which is ironic because they they Michigan State doesn't have what you would call a true center either. Although they have some really nice forwards. I, I think I think uh, Holtman said it best after the presser for the Iowa game. He just isn't seeing that fire, that energy that he has been seeing all year up until recently. And he pretty much take, took blame for it and said, hey, it's, it's on coaches as well. We got to find a way to get our players involved. I'll uh, say that I'm, I'm very happy. I'm very happy that this team is going to go six games without playing a game. I think they need it. Uh, Kyle Young and this and this was very tough games. And we, we talked we talked about it, too. Like, look at the level of competition, Ohio State played at the end of the season at the end of this season. And we talked about it earlier on and in the beginning of February too. This is a tough stretch for Ohio state. Yeah. So any rest that Ohio state can get, and that's why getting that two round by yeah. is even more critical for Ohio state, just to get that extra rest to try to get healthier. But as it stands, as of right now, they only have that one week by. So yeah, but to, to go back to Buckeye Zach's question, I think they're doing really good in the rebounds considering. I, I think they're fine. I think they're fine overall. Consider I, I, I really do. With adjusted, adjusted for again the what they are giving up in the paint against a lot of these opponents. Mm, yep. Uh 
Nomad asks, what horny seed, <coughs> and he asked this after the Michigan, or excuse me, after the Iowa game, what tournament seed do you expect Ohio State to get now? So this is, you know, we were talking about them potentially as a number one seed. And since then, they've dropped three in a row. So uh, you win, the you, you beat, uh, let me ask you this, best case scenario, they beat Illinois, they win the Big Ten tournament. Is it possible that they work their way back up into number one seed territory? Winning the Big Ten tournament would be a huge feather in their cap. That's a huge resume item. Best case scenario. They win the rest of the regular season games. They win the Big Ten tournament. Number one seed? They get a one seed. Yeah. They would get one seed. They'd probably be, they would probably get that fourth, that fourth number one seed. Cause I think right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's right as good. Now, as, that's 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 the ceiling. Number four overall the ceiling, is the that ceiling. last number one seed. I think right now they're I think right now they're they're at like middle two. I think they're like a middle two there. They they went from a one two bubble and now they're like a two three bubble. I want to say a three at this point. Now, if they just lose the first game, or or even not making it to the semifinals of the Big Ten tournament, they well, could probably be pushing to a three. Yeah, well, I think that's what I, I, I don't mean right now. I mean, it's possible for them to work their way down to a three. Yeah, I think, I, I think at this point, two, three is. Could they fall flat on their face right hard enough to fall down to a fourth seed? Or are mm-hmm. they, or is basement three at this point? Depends on how bad they look. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's fair enough. Yeah. All right. Uh, here's a trio. At least I'm like, yeah, I think a trio of questions from Austin formation, our good friend, Austin Graham. Um, what needs to be done to stop this skit? I think we make three pointers. I think is the sentiment Kyle and I have been repeating this game because mm-hmm. yeah. a, a center is not walking through the door. A true center is not walking through the door. Um, if Zed key automatically got a year older and a year bigger, but I don't think that's realistic. Go go find one of those big machines and only wish to go ahead about one year. Uh, that would be great, but it, that that's that's not uh, that's not real life. So uh, right now with the with the pieces they have, you just you got to make more threes. Yep. You, you got you got you got to be making you got to be making like bottom line forty four percent of your threes. Yeah. Has Holtman. Lost his shot at coach of the year. It's more difficult. I wouldn't say it's out, but it's it's becoming less likely as the losses come in. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Way to go, Kyle. <laughs> um, I, 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 think, I, I think if he wins the Big Ten tournament, he's sure. right there in the talks. Yeah, I think so too. So it's not over. He's He's dug a hole for himself, but it's not over. Mm-hmm. Uh, which Ohio State player needs to step up most for Ohio State to get back to midseason form? Ooh, I look at the, I look at this here. Uh, well, well, Washington needs to shoot a little bit better. It's not the it's arms. Washington. We saw Washington shoot pretty well, but it's arms. It's it it is arms. Yes, we it he, we we say they need to make three pointer. We need to make more three pointers. Was kind of been the thing of this entire show. Who's supposed to be making those threes? Who's only hit one three during this skid? And I hate to like single out someone like that, but it's I just I would be treating you like stupid children if I didn't say Arns. It's uh, you know it's it's simple. They need to make threes. He's a guy who specializes in making threes. He's not making threes. Uh, Nomad says he's not getting the play set up for him. Potentially, maybe defenses are keying on him harder. Um, it is all EJ and DW, but those guys doing the work should open things up for Arns because he's just a catch and shoot guy. He's not a make his own opportunity guy. He's a catch and shoot guy. 
um, in the same way Diebler was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, Diebler, he got open. Like he he moved around a lot better and he he got himself open. So part of it, part of it is is Arns getting himself open. Uh, yeah, well, that's all, you know, it's, yeah, I guess. Um, well, and, uh, this is telling Nomad's next question is where did Arns disappear to? Uh, not the three point line. Uh, he disappeared on the bench is what happened. Uh, he's still pulling in minutes. He is. He is. All right, another one from Austin. Uh, if you're able to start the game as a starting point guard and get a fair number of minutes, how many points would you have dropped against Iowa? Me? This guy? Uh, this this sack of water? <laughs> zero. I would I would score zero points. And I can tell you for a fact that I would score zero points because I'd never shoot. Because, no, I shouldn't be shooting. I shouldn't be on the court. But if I have to be on the court, if the premise of your question is that I am there on the court, then I will know my role and pass the rock because I have no business taking a shot. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> no. oh, wait a minute. Are you answering for yourself or for me? Yes. Uh, okay, that's 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 the answer I expected. <laughs> All right. Uh, Nomad said, uh, "Simple offense equals simple defense." Negative, positive. Uh, I, I assume he's asking negative or positive. Uh, do Do you agree? Oh, negative scoring. Uh, if pos if if I could somehow break mathematical law and score negative points, yes. Yes, yes, I would. You know what I do because I'm a good Buckeye? Here's what I do because I'm a good Buckeye. I go out there. I start the game. I immediately turn my ankle, which is to say I would fake an injury. Now, that feels like it goes against all of the rules of what it is to be a good sport, to fake an injury. That's a thing you don't do. But I'm a good Buckeye, and I need to get myself the hell off that court and put someone out there. I make it yeah, in the I, wrong I, basket. I would think like negative scoring, you could also take that as turnovers too. You turn the ball over, that's kind of negative scoring. You turn the ball over and then they get an easy layup or a dunk. That's true. I'm 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 getting injured in the first 20 seconds of the game, though. <laughs> that that's what's happening. I'll Either... take as many charges as I can. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like even if I did that, I would just end up fouling out, which again is not a bad, which is still way better than me getting a lot of minutes. Yeah. All right. Uh, Kyle, any, any, anything, anything else basketball? Cause the rest of these questions here we have are non-basketball related. Yeah. And uh, we should try and lightning round our way through them. All right. All right. Uh, ooh, I got to make this bigger, Jared. I cannot read this. Ooh, oh, that's, that's not going to work. Uh, from, uh, from Kabuto. He, uh, I know you're having trouble reading that. So let me just summarize it for you. Sure. He basically says, uh, over the past two years, anytime fields got hurt, he had to hold his breath. Uh, will we feel better about that moving forward now that the quarterback room for Ohio state is so much deeper? No, you still will. No. You still, you still will hold your breath just because he's the, whoever's going to be starting is starting for a reason. He's starting for a reason. Now, that being said, Ohio State hasn't had a backup as good as who their backup's going to be this year in a very long time. Um, not, not, not since Joey Burrow was riding the pine has Ohio, well, Ohio State have had as good a backup as they will this year. Yeah, Whoever JT, that backup JT, is, it'll be the best JT backup they've had. What's that? JT and Cardale. Cardale. Yeah, of course. Um, but yeah, I, they're, they're just a Martell. <laughs> don't he's don't <laughs> four strikes. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, they'll have the best backup they possibly have ever had. They'll have their deepest room. Cause even with Kyle McCord as a true freshman, he'd, I'd still rather have him in the game over no offense, mm. Chug, but over Chug. <laughs> yeah. But either way, to answer your question, I'd still be holding my breath. 
Yeah, I still you, you're still your starting quarterback, but you could be a little less upset now. Uh, Nomad asks, can we start a petition to get David Pollock fired for being boring, annoying, misogynist? Um, I don't know specifically what you're referring about with the last part, but just for generally being like a bore. Yeah, I don't know how he's on the game day set other than maybe boring's what they're going for. Like he's bland and inoffensive. And when you have uh, I, uh, his comments a few years ago about Condi, uh, about Condi Rice. Um, yeah, I'm not going anywhere near any of that. The <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I've never been a big fan of um, David Pollock either. Just, yeah, sure. Let's start a petition. Yeah, he's he's <laughs> like a start one. To, 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 to put this into beer, he's like a Kolsch. Okay, it's a beer, but whatever. Someone liked yeah. that. Some Someone out there really liked that reference. All right, Kabuto, another question. What was your favorite play on offense and defense from 2020? Consider highlights, but also just fa- also personal faves. You have one play from the 2020 football season that sticks out in your mind, Kyle, offense or defense? Any one play? Uh, the, the one that really sticks to my mind is, is the Clemson game where Fields takes a snap, steps up into the pocket, and it seems like he's off balance, just chucks it to the end zone just perfectly to, to um, CO2 for a touchdown. Yeah, he had a few of those this year where it he had no no right to throw the ball as well as he did, and he did. Um, Nomad says the Jackson Smith Ninjimba toe tap in the back of the end zone. Oof, uh, yeah. That was a relatively inconsequential touchdown, but pretty nonetheless. Get style points out of that. Um, yeah, those are both really good answers. I'm I'm just gonna roll with you guys on that. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, you you could. Uh, I don't know. I, I uh, I'm just, I'm gonna let you guys have the answers on that one because we need, like I said, move forward on these. Mm-hmm. Uh, the defense favorite defensive play. Uh, I I really do like seeing uh, Haskell Garrett yeah. getting a big man touchdown. Of course, of course. Yes. That's, that's uh, I know there wasn't. I, there probably isn't too much to choose from from last no. year. <laughs> yeah, the Hilliard INT against Northwestern was good. You guys are coming up with mm-hmm. way better answers than me. My my brain's not functioning correctly today. All right, I've well, been, I've, been, I've, been I've, I've not been feeling great all weekend, and that leads to not sleeping great. And my my brain's on like six right, right well, now. Well, I'll right. help you out here. So, all right, Nomad here. A couple more questions. Why can't you divide a number by zero? Cause that's not how it works. Like you can't. Can't divide by something you don't have. Well, the, the idea of dividing something is you take a thing and you split it into equal parts. And then you hit, like, if you take a pie, you divide it into equal parts and then you hand out the slices of the pie. But if there's nowhere to give the pie to, then that's that it just doesn't work. You, you can't. Now, you might divide it by one, in which case you just give someone an entire pie, but you can't give no one none of the pie. It's not how it works. Math. <laughs> All right. Uh, another question here. Who is the big bad in one division? The witch. Mm, maybe not. Maybe, maybe the not. government. Are we saying the government? No. No, it's it's something else, but okay. Well, well, well no spoilers. No spoilers. So no spoilers. Shush, shush, shush. Uh, <laughs> all right. Austin for my Austin. Well, let's answer two more the last two questions from Nomad. Why doesn't my eight year old listen? Sounds like bad parenting. Oh, Jared, Jared said it, not me, Nomad. Jared said it. <laughs> all right, and he asked, "Cold sake or hot sake?" I don't, I don't, I've never had, I, I never know, had I, one. So I can't, I can't really tell if I don't, you, you tell I'm me. I'm sure nomad. I've had sake at some point. Um, it's just, I'm a pretty boring drinker when it comes to liquor. I, I spend all of my, my, my nerd energy on beer. Um, <laughs> when it comes to liquor, it's either like bourbon 
because I like bourbon or vodka because I want to feel warm <laughs> and nothing else. <laughs> um, so I spent I buy I buy cheap vodka and good bourbon, and that's about as far as I go with uh, with my liquor. That's uh, I'm yeah. pretty boring as far well, as that goes. You, you answer you answer your own question, the Nomad. Yeah. Do you like cold or hot sake? I, I don't have an opinion. I can't. I can't say. I never. I've never had sake, so I can't. I can't really. Maybe say. I'll just say room temperature, just to be contrarian and pick a third. But <laughs> depends on I the menu. Mean. What you you can't you can't <laughs> waffle out of your own question. You can't waffle Sushi. out of your own question. Ah, uh, you yeah. know what? We're moving on. We're moving on. All right. All right, Austin formation. Last question here. Is there a number of days in a row that it's too much to eat the same type of food? No. I feel like if money was not an object for me or if health was not an object for me, I'd ha I'd have bacon every day. I and I would be perfectly happy about that. Same type of food. I don't know. For me, for me, well, I know I know my wife would be one after one day is too much, uh, <laughs> but I could eat chicken every day just because there's a thousand I, ways to I would, make. I would chicken. say probably after like maybe a week. After a week, it would probably get. I'd be done eating it. Like, oh, I get like burgers, but every burger would have a different Mad Canadian seasoning on Ooh, it. That's that's integration right there. Maybe after a week. Maybe after a week. I'm a pretty. I. I I can, I can go when I'm really trying, I can go straight up Spartan with my eating habits. I, when I bought my first house, I was desperately trying to save money for a down payment. And I basically ate tuna every day for a year, almost every day for an entire year. Uh, it can be done. And I didn't, I didn't die of mercury poisoning. I'm right here. I'm fine. Uh, <laughs> so before anyone th that was many years ago. I'm fine. Uh, eh, uh, yeah, I, I, I can do it. If, like I said, if I'm, if I'm being real disciplined and if I'm hating myself enough, I, I can go, I, I can go real Spartan like with my eating. Mm -hmm. All right. Is that all the questions, Kyle? I think that is all for today. All right. That's it. Yeah. Uh, and if, and if you, you, the listener, want to ask a question, join us on Discord. Yes. Join us on Discord. The link, as Jared loves to say, is down in the doobly doos. Yes. Join it's us. We're, we're a big, big family here. We talk a lot about basketball games not going on. We still talk a lot about football in the chats here. Uh, food, food, beer. Beer. We have a book club. Oh, book club. Ooh. We do have Fancy. a book club. Hold on. Hey, wait a minute. I'm going to announce... Oh, we have a winner this week's or this month's rather this month's book will be contact by Carl Sagan. That's the, or that's, that's the March book. I'm announcing mm. it right now. I'll throw an extra vote at it just to make sure it's extra true. Yeah. This month's book, March's book will be contact by Carl Sagan. There you go. Hmm. <laughs> all right. I, I think that's all I'm, I'm kind of looking at, Last minute things here. I'm not really, not really seeing anything else here. So I think we can end today's episode, Jared. I'll say this, and I'm not giving it away for free. But there's been some really great Nevada nuggets lately about what's happening in the uh, winter workouts, mm -hmm. including a five star. Ooh. So you just saying if you're not on the Buckeye scoop, you might want to jump on the Buckeye scoop. Mm -hmm. Now more than ever, some people think, oh, it's not football season anymore. That's when you really need it. Everyone's got scoops during football season. You need the scoop during the off season to get the good this stuff. Is, the off season is who separates from the pack. Yeah. That's why Kyle and I never stop recording. Get aboard that train. <laughs> I don't know what that was, but all right. All right. Mm. Um, yeah, that's it. That's the end of the episode. Uh, as Kyle said, join us on the Discord. You can ask us Sloopcast questions there. You can also send a Sloopcast question to sloopcast at gmail.com. That's assuming uh, Google doesn't if they stop asking me to change my password every day. Google. Is it, if anyone at Google is listening to this, stop it. <laughs> um, the 
I, I threw myself off with that one. Uh, just visit the sloopcast.com. You can find all of our links there, links to our social media pages, links to our Patreon page. Kyle, if we get enough Patreon money, and I think we're like 60 some percent of the way there, I think we're like maybe right at two thirds of the way there. Uh, mm-hmm. We will start doing the episode twice a week during, or we'll start doing the show two episodes a week during the off season and five episodes a week during the football season. Uh, yeah. And we're like 60 some percent of our way to that goal. So you can get early episodes. You can join uh, Nomad and the other guys down there in the live chat. You get premium access to our discord, which includes all of the great things Kyle already talked about, but also there's a dedicated recruiting page that's behind the discord firewall or uh, paywall, a firewall paywall. Um, you get preferential treatment when we do the ask Sloopcast questions. There's a health and fitness uh, there's a investing area. We talk a lot of, uh, we talk a lot of cryptocurrency and occasional stocks and a little bit about life insurance sometimes. Cause why not? Uh, we have, <laughs> we talk about a lot of stuff, uh, in the, uh, investment area. Yeah. Um, or if you, or if you want to help us in different ways, check out all of our, um, our t-shirts and other stuff here. Like you can get a nice hoodie or t-shirt of our off-brand of the Kyle. Buckeye Snoopcast uh, logo here. Parody. Legally, parody. it is a parody. <laughs> I did say t-shirt, Nomad. Yes. Yes. I'm wearing a uh, 7071 Brewing Company t-shirt, which um, isn't a real brewery, but is a real t-shirt. So there you go. You can find that at 7071.thesloopcast.com. And uh, you can find the official Sloopcats, Sloopcast merch uh, at merch.thesloopcast.com. And like I said, you can find all these links at thesloopcast.com. It's just a landing page where you find a bunch of other links. That's all that is. So uh, with all that being said, nope, jumped way too far ahead on that one. Kyle, do you have anything for Kyle's Corner? Hey, Nomad, uh, be thinking of a band. Ooh. Ooh. I actually became, I actually came unprepared for this chair and I apologize. <laughs> How dare um, you honestly, come unprepared as uh, I look up music in case Nomad doesn't deliver. <laughs> uh, hey, let's talk about track and field. That, 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 that was a big thing that was going on during the big 10 championship. Uh, the, uh, there, there was, it was a big, big, uh, Big day for neither Crosby, Ohio Stills, State, or State, Nash are from Ohio. Ohio State sprinter Tyler <laughs> Johnson won both the 200 and the 400 meter um, and also helped Ohio State with the 4x4 four four as well. And I believe that 4x4 four four was a Big Ten record. I believe it was. The idea uh, no yep, matter, is right to here, highlight yep. small bands from the state of Ohio. Mm-hmm. Uh, his 400 meter in his normal race of 400, he broke the Big Ten Indoor Championship record by a quarter of a second. He ran it in 45.07, which was the fastest time in the nation this season. So the fastest time this season for indoor track and field. That is amazing. How is, do they, what, is there a difference between indoor and outdoor as far there as there is? Yeah. The indoor, indoor, the track's a lot smaller. It's not, it's not a full 400 meters to, to run a whole um, loop. It's, it's a lot shorter. Okay. So how does that affect like records and all of that or do or records? They're, they're, they're just held differently. Like it's 200 indoor, 200 outdoor. It's they're different. Now, but so for 200, You'd have to take a turn indoor, but not outdoor. Or do you, would you still have to take a turn? You, you have to make multiple turns and in indoor out out the outdoor. You you start on the curve and then you just go around the curve and then the straightaway. The indoor indoor it's it's two turns. So so it is you, different. Yes. Yeah. I'm just saying like, it's, well, I was trying to decide if I wanted to be mad about the fact that the records were different or not. So inside my own head, that was me deciding not to complain. <laughs> <laughs> I totally forget. Okay. So it is, it is half. It is half. I wasn't sure if it was some odd number, but no, it is exactly half 
the size of a normal outdoor track. It's 200 meters. I thought it was something odd, but nope, it, it's exactly half. All right. All right, I see Nomad typing. Uh, uh, this is your one. Small wood house. Yeah, it's sad. Is is that a is that a band from Ohio? And which one of those is the band? <laughs> Don't know how to go. Oh no 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 no. We're no. I, I'm sorry, Nomad. I am. You, you had to Google it. This no. Uh uh. I play Ohio music on this show every day for how long? And you just don't have a favorite. You had to go to Google. No, you're you've been denied. We're 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 you're you've you've been denied. You're suspended from offering music suggestions for one month. That's it. You've been suspended. I I I'm not in charge. Yes, I am. I'm not in charge of these things. I'm sorry, but that's just the fact of the matter. You've been suspended. Uh, ending today's show will be the Wet Darlings. So you can check them out. They are an Ohio-based band. They are small, and they do deserve your attention. So uh, you can check the uh, the show notes to find the name of the song. The name of the band, once again, is the Wet Darlings. So you can you can check that out. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the Wet Darlings. How oh, dare you, Nomad? How dare you, good sir? Oh, he, oh and he left. <laughs> now I feel bad. He, he gone. Now I feel bad. <laughs> he knows I'm kidding. I hope. <laughs> he says he'll go sit in the corner now. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, that's funny. Nomad knows I love him. It's all good. Yep, yep. He's a mod for Pete's sake. I wouldn't have made him a mod if I didn't like him. <laughs> So where are we in? We're in um in fake fake spring right now, Jared. Is is that is that we yeah, are we're, we're experiencing fake spring in Ohio? But I've I don't watch the news or pay attention to the weather that much. But I I think I heard that that's officially ending as of Sunday night. Yes. But yeah, we we got a little yes. bit of fake spring. Uh, all the snow melted, so we'll just take that as nice. a win for now. Nice. Sorry, Sankar, that's that's all the uh <laughs> that's all the weather talk you're gonna get is is this little bit at the end. <laughs> Hopefully he sticks around. I don't think he listens, I don't think he watches on YouTube. And is he still in the room? I know he was in yeah. the room. Is yeah, he still he, he in the room? Wasn't, he wasn't at all. No, he was. He was in the room at one. He was in the live. Yeah, I don't think he chatted. Oh, much, yeah, just the chat. Yeah. But he he was in there listening. Yeah. I don't, I think he listens. I don't think he watches the YouTube version, so he's not going to see or hear any of this. So we're just talking about someone who is a fan of the show and they'll never know. They'll <laughs> never know about it because I think he just does the audio version. Got it. Only the right, YouTube and discord it. people get this section of the show. All right, let's, let's go ahead and, and today's episode. Oh, here. for Pete's sake, let's end the episode. Once again, I'd like to thank the Wet Darlings for ending today's episode. And I'd once again like to thank the Iron Bean Coffee Company for sponsoring today's episode. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is an Ohio-based micro roaster. Uh, all of their beans are freshly roasted to order. Hold on one second. Hey, Apollo. What are you doing? Leave LG alone. He's such a butt to her sometimes. Sorry, Iron <laughs> Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company... <laughs> It's an Ohio-based guy. We'll start over. It's fine. I, I may or may not cut this out of the uh, audio-only version of the show. And I definitely won't cut it out of the YouTube version of the show because y'all get this unfiltered. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is an Ohio-based micro-roaster. Uh, they're based out of Perrysburg, Ohio, which is near Toledo, if you do not know. Uh, all of their coffee is roast to order, so you get the freshest possible coffee. It doesn't sit in a warehouse. It doesn't sit on a shelf. It doesn't sit in the back room of the great. No, it, you order it, then it's roasted, then it's shipped to you. Roast to order coffee. Uh, you can get it in whole bean to get it even fresher. But if you're getting it ground, if you don't, if you don't have a, if, if that's just, not, if, you know, home grinding just isn't a thing that you do, that's fine because 
even then you're getting it as fresh as possible. It's almost like grinding it yourself because you're getting it delivered and it was just ground a couple days ago. Once again, not it's not, not hanging out in a warehouse. So roast to order is, if, if your coffee is not roast to order, then what are you even doing with your life? That, that's what I want to say. Aside mm -hmm. from that, it's also fair trade certified and USDA organic. I need to tighten my microphone up. It's really bugging me. The... <laughs> We are limping to a finish on this episode. Uh, integrity is their core value. Uh, it's that's that's why the coffee is so good because they do everything right. You know, they're they're single farm origin coffeeed, and like I said, they're USDA organic and they're fair trade, and the coffee's fresh. All of that amazing stuff is why the coffee is so good. They do it because it's the right thing to do, and. At the end of the day, it also makes the coffee really great. You can find so many amazing coffees there. They have some flavored ones. They're mostly unflavored, but if flavor's your thing, you can get the unicorn. And what's in the unicorn? I don't know. And neither do you. You never know what's in the unicorn. Sometimes they'll tell you, but most of the time, it's it's just a surprise. You, you never know. Uh, they also have the mom's carrot cake, the intense blueberry, and the mint chocolate chip if flavored coffees are, uh, like I said, a thing that you're into. No idea what my microphone's doing right now. The, <laughs> uh, all, all those things and more can be found if, uh, at the Iron Bean Coffee Company.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode was also brought to you by our good friends over at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Um, let's, let's talk about some of the rubs here over at the madcanadianbbq.com. We go into the ribs section. What does he have for us if we want to grill up some ribs? So he has here the old fashioned. Old fashioned, it's a mimics the classic drink of the old fashioned, uh, sweet, bourbony, and has the right kick of bitter. You can go with the Discord. It's a it's a pretty spicy uh seasoning very similar to his four horsemen but been tested by our good friends over in our discord uh he says here it's it's similar to the four horsemen but has a sweeter base uh he says it's great for chickens or ribs or you can go with the coffee and q it's coffee and it's barbecue what could you go wrong with <laughs> with that uh it's great on beef po poultry and pork and the uh the coffee part is actually part of or from the uh, iron coffee, more so the the cast iron yep. from the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Or the last one he has here for a rib, se uh, rib seasoning is the two border. It's his flagship seasoning. So you know this is a good one if he's calling this one his his flagship it's a great mix of maple sugar red pepper flakes and he uses it on all of his ribs in his food truck gives it a clean crisp sweet flavor while that red pepper flake adds the just right amount of heat to your pork it's also great for breakfast such as eggs and bacon be sure to check out those and much much more over at the mad canadian bbq.com again that is the mad canadian bbq.com be sure to use that promo code sloopcast 10 at checkout for 10 percent off your entire order mad canadian barbecue company where he has your butt covered kyle before we go austin jumped in the chat right at the end of the show just to say hashtag fire kevin warren and you know what Indeed. we agree yes 